think a lot of people are having a hard time, especially people that kind of didn't know who I was before the series. With my exuberant personality mm -hmm. and my loud, my loud mouth, the newbies, they're having a hard time. They're That's like, true. this girl is a lot. <laughs> What's up guys, Xavier here with you back on the How'd You Do It podcast and I'm hanging out with the legend, Taylor Blake. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. Wait, actually before we get started here, Xavier, um, I know there's been a lot of controversy of me in the reality house. I'm really loud, so I just wanted to offer you some Advil before oh, we get you. started. Prevent thank any you. headaches or anything like that, you know? So this is for directly after. Yeah, I gotta take care of my boy, you know? She's, uh, she hooked it up, she got in front of it, I respect mm -hmm. that. <laughs> no, seriously. Always gotta look out. Popcorn and Advil, and we've got uh, we've got Simba in the house. You already know he had to show up. Also, I spill a lot of things on me, so just be okay. Prepared. Exactly. Um, good girl, how are you? How's things? Hmm. Crazy. Like, I'm I'm gonna talk with my mouth full, so that's, that's right. just gonna happen. But um, no, life has been wild. I celebrated my birthday last week. Um, Happy Reality birthday. House. Thank yep. you. Reality House has been live. We were in like four episodes now. Whew, crazy. Yeah, we might as well get straight into it, right? There's no, oh, we're no, gonna get, yeah, no let's use, go. like, beating around the bush. That's what I'm um, saying. So you're four episodes in, how right. do you, tell me about it. Tell me about the experience, tell me how you're feeling. So it's crazy because when you're filming something like this, there are cameras on you all the time. So the amount of footage that they had, that they had to cut down into these, you know, 30 to 40 minute episodes, you never know, like, what's gonna be in it, what's not gonna be in it, you never know how you're gonna be portrayed, um, what they're going to include, what they're not going to include. So I think, I mean, I went into it completely blind. I've never, ever done anything like this. Um, never had cameras on me like that, ever. And um, so, yeah, it's been a wild ride, to say the least, you know? I think a lot of people are having a hard time, especially people that kind of didn't know who I was before the series. They're having a hard time with my exuberant personality mm -hmm. and my loud my loud mouth which i think i've always been authentic with that anybody people that have followed me you know for for years and years like they know that's who i am but you know the newbies they're having a hard time they're that's like sure. this girl is a lot and i'm like yeah <laughs> buckle just, up just uh just handing out advil to everyone huh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah to say the least, Xavier. Right. To say the least. Right. Okay. Well, f look. First of all, I have to. Uh, so, for those of you, for those people out there like myself who didn't quite catch the story with Simba here, <laughs> what's the backstory there? Because I, I obviously <laughs> see it in your photos. I saw it in the reality house. Right. People are so confused by it. Um, they're like, "What's going on? Like, someone needs to tell this girl. Like, this is not a good look. Like, mm -hmm. this isn't cute." And I'm like, "I'm not trying to be cute. I'm trying to win." Um, first of all, but so the story with Simba is contrary to what you kind of see on the show. Actually kind of have a hard time with like anxiety and stuff like that. And um, so I have this like blankie <laughs> that like I sleep with like every night and it's like kind of like my legitimate security blanket. Mm -hmm. And when I came to LA and all the hustle and bustle of me getting here to film the show, I literally like signed the contract and had to be here like three days later. And I left my blanket at home. And so um, my girlfriend, who's my girlfriend now, but wasn't my girlfriend at the time, we were just really close, um, she has Simba. This belongs to her. And because I left my blanket at home and I was like freaking out, I'm like, I don't like, I'm going into this. I don't know what I'm like doing. I don't know any of these people. Mm -hmm. She was like, just take Simba. Like, he'll bring you comfort. Okay. And that he did. Like, I, he became like my security blanket and like my good luck charm th throughout the entire show. Well, for as long as I was there. So mm -hmm. um, you'll see him pretty much in every challenge. And he's either on my head or like tucked into my body okay. somewhere. All so, right, cute. Yeah. All right. Glad we sorted that out. So how was your, uh, how was your general experience on the show? Did you have a great um, time? Or how, how do you how are you feeling? I had I had a blast. Um, I think I had no idea what I was walking into. I think a lot of the people, like a lot of the other cast, they had um, they had done things like this before. You know, whether it be like MTV reality shows or other like web reality shows, they kind of knew what to experience and kind of had been in the industry a lot longer than I had. Um, so I genuinely had no idea what I was walking into. But all in all, it was the most humbling and like beautiful experience and challenging experience of my life. I, my body went through hell and back, but um, I'm genuinely just so like humbled at the fact that I was able to be around so many like creators that I've looked up to for so many years and people that I never even thought that I would be in the same room with, much less strategizing and competing against. So all in all, like it was super humbling and exciting and 
I loved it. I really did. Is it? Uh, well, that's great. Is it what you expected? Did you get in there and be like, "Whoa, this is uh, this is totally different to how <laughs> I sort of pitched it"? Um, I didn't know what to expect. To mm -hmm. be honest with you, I was one of the ones that didn't even watch season one. Mm -hmm. So I, and even if I would have watched season one, I think season two was so drastically different and such like a bigger production than season one was that like even if I would have watched season one I still don't think I would have known what to expect. Yeah. So I feel like legitimately I went into it like I'm legally blind. Like I had no like there was nothing. Like yeah. I was yeah. I had yeah, no well that, that's it. I mean obviously um so when we had the boys on that we're just like the first was just right. hilarious. Trial was, and error. Yeah, for sure. And then they were like this one we know what we're doing. It's like it's gonna be completely different. Right. So it definitely seems like they had big plans and, and after watching it I'm like, you know, I almost want to text JC and be like, Well done. Like it, it it did seem like a lot more, you know, obviously elevated but just organized as well. Yeah. They said did they did it feel like they really knew what was going on this time around? It, it really did. It's so funny because the way that like Kian and, and Jason, as I don't know if you've heard oh, the yeah, recent uh, developments, Amari, it's actually yeah. uh, Jason now. The way that Kian and Jason like played it up, it, they they play so well off of each other. Mm -hmm. And so even if there were like little flubs where they made mistakes, like I love that the the editor, you know, Andy, he like left that in the show because that's so true to them. Yeah. So like, no, it wasn't like perfect. And there were times when we're like, whoa, 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 let's stop. No, like that's okay. That's yeah. not how it was supposed to be. But for the most part, like, yeah, it was really organized. Like there was a full film crew all the time. Plus like dozens of security cameras watching you. Like you really didn't have any alone time. Like even when you were sleeping, boom, the cameras were on you. <laughs> gotcha. I actually got in trouble for unplugging the camera in my room. Oh, uh, like times. the, the microphone? Oh, no, the, the, the cameras, camera. they had security cameras on us. And they're like, Taylor, you have to stop unplugging the cameras in your room. And I'm like, I literally, I don't even know what you're talking about. I never unplugged any <laughs> camera in the room. And they're like, Taylor, we have you on camera unplugging the camera. Mm -hmm. and I was like, I plead the fifth on that one because yeah, yeah. honestly, I don't recall. Yeah. <laughs> Back to differ. Like I'm changing. Yeah. Yes. All right, so tell me a little bit about the uh, the challenges. Which one did you? So we've seen, you know, so far we've seen four episodes worth. Right. What what one is the most memorable in your mind and why? So, as f we're four episodes in, so there's only there's only been three challenges shown. So I can't I can't really it's speak on a whole lot. The ones that you've se that we've seen. I mean, hello, the claw challenge. Like, are you kidding me? Like, they, you guys can't even fathom. Like, that was the most intense thing. First of all, it was super cool because I predicted like almost every challenge in the house beforehand. I'm like very intuitive. So I, I just, did like, see that, I was impressed you got like, that one right. It was right. weird, like they had like a production meeting because they were like, someone's leaking her information. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's Simba. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but it was, uh, that, that challenge was crazy. I kind of have, it was funny because they featured like Andrea has like a fear of heights and I too have like a fear of heights. Um, but I'm also like an adrenaline junkie, so I was so stoked. Like I was ready, my body was ready. I wanted them to pick my name out of the hat first for that for that challenge. But the aftermath, I, like the backs of my thighs, I had bruises, like giant bruises, like for a week and a half wow. after that challenge. Like it was intense, it hurt your body, but. Like, who else gets to be a human claw machine? Like, yeah. I mean, it was dope. Yeah, for sure, yeah. and like, it's so funny even, um, Ryan taught like you know for example talking about he's like you know I was like trying to prepare and like practice all my skills but like how would I have been no. able to prepare for like getting a fishing rod and getting a lure out of like a jar That's and then saying. holding an egg like on a spoon in my mouth like it's, did you did you find it weird all the stuff that you were having to do like I'm glad I didn't try and prepare like I'm really I mean, glad how, because how I would, would not have like what would I have done like so, there's nothing that you can do to prepare for any of these challenges because they're so out of pocket and crazy and wild that it's like nothing you would ever expect. Um, and so that was good though, because it, I think that it showed that like, they weren't trying to necessarily focus on like athletic ability because there are some people that are naturally more athletic than others. So everybody had like a fair shot. Like For it sure. wasn't, you know, it didn't matter like what, how much you weighed. It didn't matter what your body type was. It didn't matter. Like you were, it was all fair game. Yeah. Like everybody was, everybody was equally like matched. Do you, think that, do you think that was obviously intentional? I hope it was. Yeah. I mean, I guess wasn't. it would have to have been, yeah. Yeah, if it wasn't, good job by accident, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it was. How did you feel when um, the four contestants from season one came in? <laughs> First of all, I, so I also predicted that I thought those four were going to come back. Um, I was super stoked about Sarah coming back. Like, I love Sarah with everything in me. Um, so when she got out, when she stepped out, she was like the first one that came out of the car, and I was like, 
I want her to stay in the house, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I think we all kind of felt, we all kind of had our own little feelings about like, okay, they had their season, they mm -hmm. had season one, like they had their chance to win. Um, but I can't lie, I was super stoked to see Elijah and Sarah hop out of that car. Like I was, I was like, you're, yes. you're excited to see I was uh, uh, Elijah, was, Elijah as, yes. as aggressive and outspoken as he is. You know, it's so funny because like a lot of people have put a lot of pressure on me about like being aggressive and being loud and everything like that. But I eat everything Elijah does up. Like I think he's, I, I love him. I think he's awesome. I think he's brilliant. I think he's hilarious. I love the way he stirs the pot and is so unapologetic about it. And um, no, I had, a, I had a lot of fun. There was like a long extended period when we were waiting for that challenge to be filmed, like the elimination challenge. And so we were all just like cramped in that little garage. And I spent a lot of time with, with Elijah and Sarah and I got to know them both very well. And I think they're both awesome humans. So okay. I was stoked. How was the, uh, the general vibe in the house when, when the four of them stepped out of the car? I think we all expected it. Um, we all kind of knew that it was coming. Mm -hmm. There had been some speculation. I mean, and they had, I guess they had announced it, just not who was yeah, coming. Right. Yeah, right. Well, they had been kind of vague about it. Mm -hmm. um, so we weren't sure. We weren't sure if they were coming back for the finale, when they were coming back. So I think everybody was kind of shocked to see them that night. Like it was like, oh, okay. Yep. So this is really soon and we're bringing, okay. They didn't have to compete in the first challenge. So there were a few people that were like bit, kind of bitter about that, you know, like they didn't have to go through the first challenge or, or anything. But yep. um, all in all, like I think everybody in the house got along really well, despite what you see in the show for, sure. for the most part everybody got along and you know we're, we're cool with each other gotcha so. okay yeah because it i mean it did uh i wouldn't say aggressive or or not well it did get a little nasty but like um <laughs> it definitely seemed like people were very competitive in the edit yeah did it not feel like that as much in real life um i so it's so funny because like when we're in the house like i genuinely in the beginning maybe i'm clueless i don't think i am but I didn't really pick up on the fact that so many people genuinely disliked me in the house. Um, <laughs> like, I know that I'm, like, really loud and stuff, but, like, for the most part, I, I tried my best to be, like, nice to everyone and, like, support and cheer everyone on from the sidelines. So, I mean, granted, I did it very loudly, but, like, I didn't, I didn't, I genuinely didn't realize that, like, that many people were like, dude, she's got to go. Like, so when you're watching the edits, yeah. watching it on YouTube and you're seeing all the confessionals and yeah. stuff? Gotcha. I'm like, that was kind of mean, but like, I still love you because like, I know what our real relationship was like in the house, despite like how it's portrayed, you know, right. because you always got to have the drama. You always got to have the juice. Um, that makes for better TV. I, yeah, I guess it, it does seem like you'd have to have thick skin to right. be a part of something like that. Right. For sure. Were you, uh, were you nervous? I mean, obviously like there's a big risk with, uh, with reality TV in that you don't know what they're going to show. Right. You know what I mean? Were you surprised with your edit? Were there things you're like, ah, oh, why did they have to keep showing that? Why didn't they show this instead? Or right. Um, I think I've done my best just to keep in mind that like people are always going to find a way to perceive you however they want. And it doesn't, you know, it's not necessarily about the edit. It's not about this and that, but at the end of the day, like, they're trying to create good TV. Mm -hmm. And so it's natural, it makes more sense for them to include, you know, clips of the drama and us not getting along rather than us all, you know, buddy buddy on the couch painting each other's nails and doing puzzles together. I understand that that's probably pretty boring. So mm -hmm. um, I think I, I fully expected, I've always also kind of lived life knowing that like I have the type of personality where people either absolutely love me or absolutely hate me. And there's like no real like gray area in between. Mm -hmm. So I knew I was going to have people that supported me, and I knew that I was going to have people that absolutely despised me, and I, I kind of set myself up for it. So um, I don't like read the comments, though. Like I don't like I don't read the YouTube comments. I don't put myself through that because mm -hmm. I know myself and I know my heart, and um, I know that you know my content speaks for itself. So. For sure. And are you? Because uh, obviously new episodes are dropping every twice a week, and right. obviously you, you know, are you seeing new fans pop up and and you know positive people and negative people, like sort of newcomers to your Instagram and being yeah. like, I didn't know who you were before the reality house, but yeah. like now I'm following you and this is what I have to say. Right, right, right. No, definitely. There's been a lot of love and a lot of hate. Um, but my favorite is like people who like hated me from like the first episode or the second episode now kind of coming around more in the fourth episode. Like I had somebody tweet at me yesterday and they were like, okay, um, I really hated Taylor from the jump despised her but eh, she's kind of growing on me and I'm like hello yes like yeah. let me grow let me bloom like I love that I love when people like 
finally like open their heart and kind of give me a chance and mm -hmm. just see the wacky, crazy, out of pocket person that I am and appreciate it. Yeah. Really, what's what's wacky about this picture? You think? Realistically, I have no idea, but yeah. that's what people say. I'm yeah, still right. trying to figure it out. Yeah, I, I really oh, am. Jeez. <laughs> Sips like what? Tea. Like <laughs> that's amazing. And do you remember? It doesn't have to be like um, in hindsight at the time. Right. Um, do you remember who you felt was sort of the most like threatening? Do you remember being like, oh damn, I got to watch out for this person. They could definitely win. Um. Yeah, for sure. So. I think everybody in the house, this is like a collective thing that everybody agreed upon is that we all pretty much had pe like we pegged like Harrison. Um, he's from the UK. We pegged him to win from like the beginning, like mm -hmm. literally before we even got in the house. Everyone's like, OK, Harrison's going to win. He's adorable. He's super sweet. Like he doesn't really have anything negative to say about anyone. He played the game really, really well. And um, he just like was also dominating, like won both of like the first two challenges, like and just was kind of not flying under the radar because like everyone loved him, but like he's like he's not someone that you would like look at and think like oh he's like super like you know athletic and mm -hmm. this and that. No, he just knew how to play the game and he right. was he was crushing it. So I was definitely as far as guys are concerned, he was the one I was most intimidated by. And then for girls like um, Lena, Lena was crushing it. She um, she's so dope, such a sweet human um, and super athletic like. We actually, you saw in yesterday's episode, we got the exact same number of balls in the, in the uh, what was it called? The claw machine challenge. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think I knew from that moment, I'm like, okay, as far as girls and like competitiveness, I think that she's like my, my biggest competition. And I think that she kind of saw the same in me. And right. I think that's why there was a little bit of, of friction between gotcha. the two. And uh, who, did you, who did you get along with the most? Did you make any good friends in there? You know, it's, I did. I, um, like I said, contrary to like the edit, I genuinely don't have a negative thing to say about anyone mm. that, that I was in that house with. Even the four that came back from last season, like um, there's there was definitely some friction between Dom and I. Um, but we're both kind of loud and outspoken, and I think that that was like kind of easy friction to create between he and I because mm -hmm. we have kind of similar personalities. Um, but I I got really close with Andrea, who mm -hmm. shared a room with me. Um, she slept in the, I, we called it, I called it the head of household room, mm -hmm. even though it wasn't, but <laughs> I thought it had a nice ring to it. So, um, <laughs> we slept in the head of household, uh, room. And so she was like my immediate roommate and she and I got along really well. She's a dope human, love her to death. And then, um, the other was Manny. I got along really, really well with Manny. Manny is the sweetest soul. Like I, if I could spend all day every day hugging him with his consent, I would do it. He's he's incredible. And so I actually, me, Andrea, and Manny, we create an alliance. And we, oh. had a, we had an alliance on the show. And so I don't think that they actually show that because it's already been created as all these episodes have aired. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so those are the two people that I had an alliance with in the okay. house, Andrea and Manny. Insight information. Yeah. Um, and, look, I'll stop. Uh, I think I'm always done grilling you on this. But okay. uh, what, are, what are your... Um, you know, can you give a, give us a heads up at all, or any hints or teasers on what what we can expect? Um, more drama. Um, things get really intense. Uh, a lot of tears, and a lot more Simba. Which, what more could you want? Really? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, okay, I'll take a couple of questions we've got in here. Which, and if you can, yeah, if you can, can answer, answer this, that. which household ga house guest did you not vibe with? Hashtag tea time. Hashtag tea time. Hold on, before we get started on this, let me sip my tea. I shall <laughs> sip mine also. Pinkies up, Xavier. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Always, um, girl. Always. So, I had the most drama in the house with. Key and sister Tabitha, um, which you guys have already all seen that. But disclaimer, I absolutely love Tab. I think she's great outside of the house. Like, mm -hmm. we get along really well. I was just texting her on my way here. So um, stop hating on Tabitha. She's dope. Um, just because she and I had the most drama in the house doesn't mean that, like I said, I love everybody in the house. And sure. then the other person <laughs> that I have had drama with and that really got... Um, he, he did a really good job of getting under my skin, and he knew it, and uh, that's Dom. And Dom and I, like, he's a dope human, and he's out of pocket and crazy. Um, but, yeah, there are definitely some tense moments between he and I in the house okay. uh, as well, for sure. All so right. that. If you like what you saw, make sure you check out some of our other videos right here, and also be sure to subscribe to our channel right here for new videos coming out every week.